Hello, my name is Jim Belfiore, and I'm pleased to be able to present to you here at TrizCon a presentation on the current and emerging ISO standards for innovation management and their impacts to the Triz community. In this talk, I'm going to give a brief introduction and also a brief history and background on the International Organization for Standardization. I'm going to focus on the new and emerging ISO 56000 standards family as well as selected standards from that family. I'm going to talk about some of the implications for the adoption of TRIZ and what that means especially for TRIZ practitioners. And finally, I'm going to offer some recommendations for the TRIZ community and TRIZ practitioners and how they can leverage these standards to increase the adoption of TRIZ by industries around the world. A brief bit of background on myself. I'm the founder and CEO of Sensorinus, an innovation consulting firm that helps customers remove barriers to innovation. Prior to founding my company, I had been working with Invention Machine for 10 years prior to its acquisition by IHS, later IHS Market, helping customers around the world solve challenging engineering design problems using innovation methods including TRIZ. More recently, my course Managing Innovation premiered on LinkedIn Learning. But I really want to focus on the topic of hand, how recent standards in innovation management are going to be changing the landscape of how companies apply innovation methodology. In this presentation, I'm going to be talking about some of the first publications of ISO guidance standards on innovation management. I'm going to be talking about some of the adoption questions and alignment to other management system standards and the unique opportunities this presents to TRIZ practitioners. In 2019 and 2020, the first publications from the new ISO 56000 family of standards on innovation management systems were published. These standards and the rest of that family offer guidance to product and process organizations for defining, adopting, and operating innovation management systems. They establish a common language for innovation practices. There are multiple standards in this family that are in different stages of publication or development. Questions are being raised by major companies around the world as well as governments as to how these standards should be considered and adopted. These standards align to other ISO management system standards, which make them very, very appealing to bring into organizations. This leads to a unique opportunity for the TRIZ community. The standards provide a focused insight and guidance related to key sections of multiple standards. And there's precedence from other management system standards such as ISO 9001, ISO 14001, and ISO 27001. This could spark a renaissance in the awareness, enablement, and adoption of TRIZ methods and other innovation methodologies across many industries. Before we go into the specifics of several of the innovation management standards, let's talk just a little bit about the background and history of ISO, the International Organization for Standardization. We'll talk a little bit about its founding and members, their goals, and their historical focus as well as their recent evolution. The International Organization for Standardization was founded in 1947. It's composed of technical and industry leaders representing over 160 countries. Their primary goals were to ensure that products and services are safe, reliable, and of good quality. For decades, they published standards mostly related to manufacturing and units of measure. But in 1987, their first publication of a quality management standard, ISO 9001, became a seminal standard that affects companies to this day on the manufacturing process and quality of products that they create. That was followed in 1996 with environmental management standards, ISO 14001. And ISO has branched out more recently into many fields, including information security, energy management, corporate integrity, and more recently, even social responsibility. The ISO 56000 family of standards represents a new chapter in management system standardization. We're going to talk a bit about the ISO 56000 family, the roadmap for those standards and their development. The first of those standards, the ISO 56000 standard itself, which focuses on fundamentals and vocabulary of innovation management, 
and perhaps the most significant of publications to date, ISO 56002, a comprehensive guidance document for innovation management systems. So what are the standards in the ISO 56000 family? What do they mean? Well, they're focused on innovation management systems. The first standards were published in 2019. There's currently a total of eight standards in that track. The goal of these standards is simple. Provide guidance to organizations on how to structure and manage innovation. The standards are meant to be easily integrated with widely adopted management system standards that already exist, especially ISO 9001. These standards take a systems approach to managing innovation. They're designed to support innovation in organizations of any size, from the small entrepreneurial startup all the way out to the Fortune 100 manufacturing giant. They drive benefits within and outside of an organization. Now, these standards are guidelines for establishing a sustainable innovation culture. And perhaps most importantly, these standards are non-prescriptive. They simply describe how innovation might be managed. They do not provide for the specific tools or methods that might be employed. And as we'll see, this represents a very, very unique opportunity for the TRIZ community. The roadmap for the ISO 56000 family includes eight standards as well as working documents and technical specifications. ISO 56000 is a fundamentals and vocabulary guidance standard that define terms around innovation and innovation management that can be used by any industry. ISO 56002, published in 2019, focuses on innovation management systems, offering guidance as to how those management systems should be structured. ISO 56003 give guidance on tools and methods for innovation partnerships. ISO 56004, also published in 2019, offers guidance on innovation assessments. The remaining standards are still in development. Perhaps most notably, ISO 56005 will be a guidance standard around tools and methods for intellectual property management. ISO 56006 will offer guidance on tools and methods for strategic intelligent management. ISO 56007 will focus on guidance for idea management. And then ISO 56008 will give guidance on tools and methods for innovation operation measurements. There's also some working documents and technical specifications, including ISO 56010, which will provide illustrative examples of ISO 56000. Focusing on the ISO 56000 standard itself, this guidance document establishes a foundation from which all of the other standards in that series are built. The standard defines common terminology for innovation management. It enables consistency in communications about innovation processes and outcomes across organizations and across industries. It provides a universal vocabulary, fundamental concepts, and principles of innovation management. And it enables organizations to share and integrate innovation activities in a credible and consistent manner. ISO 56002 is a standard offering guidance on innovation management systems. It's based on eight principles that organizations seeking to manage innovation must adopt and own. The realization of value, the development of future-focused leaders, continually assessing and setting strategic directions, creating, growing, and sustaining an innovation culture, exploiting insights, managing uncertainty, being highly adaptable, and implementing a systems approach to innovation. The standard offers comprehensive guidance addressing all phases of innovation management, from ideation through validation to commercialization and creation and management of intellectual property. Many sections of this standard offer guidance which aligns to benefits, methods, tools, and practices 
of numerous innovation methodologies and processes, including, and in my opinion, especially the TRIZ method. The ISO 56002 standard, in my opinion, is a sales document for adopting innovation best practices for continuous business as well as business model improvement. This standard is currently under evaluation by professional innovation societies, Fortune 500 firms, as well as major governments. It's something that I'm certainly seeing in my own practice. Questions are being raised by companies, small and large, as to how do we consider this standard? How do we adopt it? How do we adopt what it's recommending in our operations? And this is not the only time this is going to happen. There are going to be a number of instances in the coming years, particularly around ISO 56005, uh, the guidance for IP management, as well as the standards on idea management and strategic intelligent management. It presents a unique opportunity for anybody who works as an innovation practitioner, particularly leveraging methodologies such as TRIZ, to offer guidance, advice, and strategy to companies that are looking to bring standardization to their innovation processes. At this point, it's important to take a step back and ask ourselves as innovation and TRIZ practitioners, well, what does this mean for us? What does this mean for how we operate, for the customers that we serve? And I'd like to talk a bit about what I see in terms of ISO 56000 and how that aligns to promoting the adoption of TRIZ, as well as ISO 56002. Again, what is in that standard that helps practitioners and their customers adopt, align, and leverage the benefits of innovation methods, including TRIZ methods? In my opinion, the TRIZ practitioner has a lot to gain by reviewing the scope and content of the ISO 56000 family of standards. In particular, ISO 56000 presents fundamental concepts, terms, and definitions that align to key benefits of TRIZ methods, practices, and use cases. Uh, let's just take a look at an example. Section 4.2.5 of the ISO 56000 standard outlines reasons that an organization would want to adopt practices of innovation. And several of these align directly to value drivers of TRIZ methods. As quoted in the uh, standard itself, an example, ensuring that the innovation strategy and objectives are flexible and adaptable to the evolution of promising opportunity areas. This aligns very nicely to considering TRIZ patterns of system evolution. The alignment of TRIZ to concepts, value drivers, and innovation management use cases described in this standard and in the family of standards is significant. TRIZ practitioners have a unique opportunity to, in many cases, reintroduce TRIZ to organizations as part of a larger adoption of the ISO 56000 family of standards. In my opinion, the methods and tools of TRIZ can align to many, if not all, of the eight principles listed in ISO 56002. Aligning the benefits and value proposition of different aspects of TRIZ methods to different parts of ISO 56002 will enable TRIZ practitioners to more effectively drive adoption of TRIZ within a standard context that can apply to any industry that focuses on sustainable value creation and delivery. Let's take a look at an example. From ISO 56002, section 4.1.1b, the organization should regularly determine areas of opportunity for potential value realization. Now, TRIZ practitioners often lead teams or workshops that focus on discovering the most valuable problems to solve as a preamble to helping teams identify and validate concepts. As part of a regularly scheduled event within an organization to identify areas of value creation, TRIZ offers benefits that help fulfill this guideline. In another example from ISO 56002, uh, section 4.1.2F, the standard says, the organization should regularly scan and analyze the external context 
considering issues related to the potential opportunities and threats, also those that might result from disruptions. Organizations that create and design products, processes, or other forms of intellectual asset value need to be aware of what's coming and have an ability to project what might be coming independent of documented or historical insights. TRIZ practitioners are very well aware of the power and value of S-curve analysis, as well as other methods that examine how technologies and solutions might evolve. Organizations that adopt the ISO 56002 standard are going to commit resources and roles that require this kind of forethought and analysis. So TRIZ practitioners have a particularly strong conversation point within this guideline and should consider asking organizations how they currently track and project future solutions and disruptions to their value streams. Let's take a look at one more example from ISO 56002. This one comes from Section 7.6b. The standard says, the organization should consider creating awareness of, ensuring access to, and providing training for the available innovation tools and methods. Tools and methods can focus on ideation, scenario planning, idea management, design strategies, business model templates, and many other topics related to managing innovation. The form and formats of such tools and methods can include, and are certainly not limited to guides, uh, software, presentations, and live services. Section 7.6 of the ISO 56000 standard is perhaps the easiest point of entry for a TRIZ practitioner to start a conversation with an organization regarding the adoption of TRIZ tools and methods as part of a broader ISO 56000 adoption strategy. Combined with other alignments to the ISO 56002 standard and the ISO 56000 family, the TRIZ practitioner can create tailored and effective roadmaps that help organizations achieve ISO 56000 adoption through the adoption of TRIZ methods and tools. We've covered a lot of ground in this presentation, and I'd like to end with some recommendations for TRIZ practitioners as well as the broader TRIZ community. In recent years, it's been observed that TRIZ adoption has stagnated and in some industries has seen a decline. TRIZ is often considered a niche discipline, and TRIZ practitioners have certainly seen that without dedicated sponsorship, it's very difficult for TRIZ to be adopted as a sustainable program, even in the largest of organizations. The recent awareness by governments and industry of the emerging ISO 56000 family is growing, and it's raising questions by organizations and governments as to how to best adopt these standards. It's recommended that TRIZ practitioners become aware and well-versed in the entire ISO 56000 family and keep a watchful eye on the continuing development in coming years on the upcoming releases of the additional standards in this track. It's also recommended that TRIZ organizations work with their memberships to develop alignment strategies of TRIZ methods to the ISO 56000 family and create materials and services that promote the adoption of the ISO 56000 family through leveraging of TRIZ tools, methods, and insights. By aligning the business value proposed by the ISO 56000 standards family with TRIZ, the TRIZ community has a unique opportunity over the next few years to significantly increase mindshare and adoption of TRIZ tools and methods in the name of driving value through the adoption of innovation management standards. Thank you for watching this presentation here at TRIZCon 2020. I'm very grateful for your time and consideration. If you have follow-up questions or would like to learn more about the ISO 56000 family of innovation management standards, please don't hesitate to get in touch. You can use the information here on this slide, or you can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. Just indicate that you saw this presentation when you do reach out. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day.